Where is that pharmacy at? It's really stuttery today. I don't know what's up with that. Ever since the last patch, it's been it's been stable frame rate, but really unstable frame time, which is odd. Ooh, a new uh, new spot. Ooh, we have a new Taylor's dilemma. That's good. Let's go to the Shulsky shop real quick. Is that here in Mirov? I don't remember. I mean, it must be, right? Or is it just gonna guide me right there? Nope, it's not. We're good. So we're gonna get Jin soon, which will be the third Salutor. Fashion review, okay, July 1904. July issues lead stories of debate on boundaries and fashion by renowned Warsaw tailors M. Hass and B. Malinowicz, which is uh, one is wearing an extravagant item considered an expression of bold creativity and one does it defy good taste. Give me them experience points. Okay. Yay, another thaumaturgy point. We got eight of them. Back this way. I should probably go back to the Taylor's Dilemma. Because it does look like there are a few, uh, that the, the actual timer for the quest is, is genuinely ticking down, so. Let's just head down there right now, get that done. Come on, Victor, hustle. I think we'll get like a purple and gold outfit now, I think. Mr. Shulsky, come in. What's new? I've got some fresh ideas for you. I see what it is you are getting at, but the collection still seems to have some missing pieces. Please, keep looking. We need bold concepts. Meanwhile, I've just heard all of that already. I would. Okay, so it's it's green and yellow. That's cool. A hint of disregard. That sounds cool. All right, let's look at these. That's not a bad outfit. I do like that. There we go. That's the outfit. Wait. Did it not save? How many outfits do I have so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight? Eight out of twelve or whatever, and then almost all of the salutors. Okay, um, let's go back to the pharmacy now. So we have we have six of the eight salutors and eight of the outfits.
Oh, I just realized that the red, the the marker is marked on the map. It's it's a tiny little dot on the edge of the map. That's interesting. I never noticed that before. That being said, snapping my fingers all the time is actually helpful because it shows me the stuff in the environment where uh, there are pickups and stuff like that. Which is why it's also useful to just kind of run around and go weird ways to just make sure that you're hitting any sparklies that might appear. There we go. Locked pharmacy. The windows are boarded up and the doorstep is covered with a thick layer of dust. The pharmacy was the jewel in the neighborhood's crown, till it wasn't. Customers took their business elsewhere, which wouldn't have been such a bad thing if not for their whispers. Whispers of the place having a bad aura, which forever destroyed that which was good about it. Empty pomade container. Pomade. I can see the bottom. Gone is the sheen of pomade. The box is densely covered with words of matter-of-fact calculation and focus on the goal. Carrying out the command will require the explosive uh, explosion to be spectacular. It must shake the very foundation of the Tsar's empire. And that will require more pomade. Much more. But how can one get it when the Tsar's dogs are tracking one's every move? Aha! So they're using the pomade as an, as an uh, accelerant, I guess, or something. Some kind of chemical in the explosion. They're making a bomb. Windowsill. It has rings from glasses and cups on it. Someone wasn't using a coaster. The destroyed wood of the windowsill is filled with the fear of revenge from people he ultimately failed to help. People who will come, not for medicine, but to wring his neck. But this is still better than the fate of the thaumaturge. Will, the fate the thaumaturge will inflict on him. Shulsky is the one to be is one to be feared. Stanislav's sins. Mordechai blames father for the disappearance of Abraham Horowitz, but he does not know the whole truth. Horowitz was involved in a dangerous game between the socialists and the Ochrana which sooner or later would have put many people in danger. Stanislav Shulsky got rid of the apothecary in cold blood, but he did it in the name of a greater good. All right, so are we going to confront Mordechai or are we going to confront the rabbi? Let's see where it brings us. Let's go to the Miro of Barber and see what he has to give me. My, I can see you need a haircut, sir. Is it that all? No worries. Because I don't remember ever stopping in here. Spick and span. Kick shot. Ooh, that one's not bad. That's fun for Victor. Ooh, suave. We'll get that. Sure. So, how do you like your new hairdo? Perfect. I look brand new. <laughs> you were already very handsome. I only needed to further enhance your looks. Sure, why not? All right, so we are going to Mordecai then. walk over here. Mr. Shulsky again. Have a new theory. I know about the pharmacist. Beg your pardon? All this is because Abraham Horowitz, isn't it? He lost his life, and the whole community felt it. Seems like you did most of all. I just don't get why Horowitz was so important to you. Community. Something you Shulskis don't know a thing about. Here, we take care of everyone equally. No one is more or less important than anyone else. Your father's punishment was fitting for his actions and his background. The wrath of the Jewish people. A death for a death. Was it worth it? A golem is a blunt instrument that kills and harms everyone in reach. What are you talking about? I don't think the punishment is adequate for the crime. Horovitz had something on his conscience. He must have, if both the Ohrana and the Socialists were interested in him. And what my father did... I can't believe I'm saying this, but his motives seem 
noble. Or do they? There's no trace of cruelty in his actions. He didn't do it for his own profit, but for some kind of greater good. Without any specifics, those are just words. You wanted to teach my father a lesson, and you did. It's too bad innocent people died in the process. The building that collapsed on Stanisław, it was inhabited by people. Now all that's left of them are some damaged items. That's what happens every time the golem physically manifests. Random people lose their lives due to its untamed power. No, it can't be. It wasn't supposed to be that way. My father and Sofer knew one another for years. Father knew the rabbi could be forced to create a golem if Horowitz was killed. They both took that risk. Sofer couldn't reveal that he knew Stanisław. He also knew that Horowitz had to disappear because he was a threat to too many people. To whom? That doesn't matter. You don't have anything to do with this, Mordechai. Just like I have nothing to do with my father's actions. I am connected to them only by my blood. What do you want? To get rid of the golem. Tell me something, anything, that will get me closer to a solution. Instead of telling you, I'll show you. Where? Into an alley? Where some friend of yours will smack me around? To the synagogue. Are you coming? Yes. Let's go. Let's do it. We'll stop to get Feldman. He should see this too. I like that they just disappear. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Is there anything over here to look at before we move in? Dungeon? <laughs> Why do you need a dungeon underneath the synagogue? Jeez. <laughs> Column. Let's be honest, it keeps the ceiling from collapsing, but it looks ready to collapse itself. Hardly encouraging. The column trembles with the fear of the man who is watching the summoning ritual. Gollum, the embodiment of a salutor, was being born in an incredible yet terrifying spectacle that was more like a nightmare than a dream. Inscribed material. Material with a painstakingly inscribed Hebrew incantation. Words of deep concentration hovered over the material. Any mistake, even the smallest slip in the placed incantation may spell failure for the de or the death of the Kabbalist. Therefore, keep calm and proceed slowly with precision. The stakes are high. Buckets of clay. The clay was probably used to create Gollum. Pieces of a dilemma attach themselves to the then wet clay. On the one hand, animating a Gollum is an extreme measure. Reckless even. On the other hand, that Laos Shulsky had it coming. Given his crimes, no punishment is too great or severe. Destroyed wall. So this is how the golem got out. This hole explains Feldman's problems with the roof. Stones crack, crumble, and fall. The wall crumbles into dust, faced with a brutal, inhuman strength, fueled only by hatred, emptiness, and destruction. Synagogue basement. This is where the where golem that chased down and killed father was summoned. And now it's after me. I thought salutors couldn't take on a physical form, but I was wrong. The Kabbalah and hatred are capable of bending even the fundamental laws of thaumaturgy. I can't undo this on my own. I need an ally. So, no wonder the roof is leaking if the foundation is crumbling. A lovely metaphor, Hashem. But what happened here had nothing to do with Hashem, did it? Mr. Shulsky wished to know the origin of his curse. This is where it took its shape. If I'd... Now I see it differently, but... But back then, when I was talking to Sofer, Revenge and justice seemed one and the same. Revenge is no justice. It is always dictated by anger, 
and in anger, Aaron comes easily. But Sofer agreed to it. He summoned the golem. What else do you want to know? Hmm. What do you remember from the moment you summoned the golem? Nothing. I don't want to go back to that. Your memory takes shape and forms into words. Talk to me, Mordechai. I feel cold. Cold from the clay seeps into my fingers, into my bones. But the Colossus I've been sculpting for hours is nearly ready. Sofer whispers the spell in Hebrew, but his words throb in my temples and soul. The Colossus comes to life and looks at me. What did Sofer say then? I don't... I don't know. Speak. I couldn't hear, I swear. I couldn't hear. Truly, enough, I beg you, enough. Your family and your blood deserve this curse. Enough. Ah, yet. How could Sofor have done something like this? And you, sir, how are you not ashamed? Maybe I've treated higher than fairly. You made him relive all that. That's torture. I wanted to know. Anything might help us get rid of the golem. Even so. This place won't tell me any more. And what have you learned? The hole you can't miss over there is the new door the golem smashed when it was summoned to life. And no one saw anything. How is that possible? The clay formed a shell that Sofer infused with the Salutar. Hyal brought it and spent hours shaping the body of the golem. Hours? That must have been horribly exhausting. What's a few hours in exchange for a curse that lasts generations? Hmm? These are the remains of some fabric that Sofa wrote something on, in Hebrew, I think. This might be some prayer, incantation, even a spell. There's not enough left to read anything. That's all, but I'm not any closer to a solution. I need someone like Sofa. A thaumaturge and a Kabbalist? Do you know one, Rabbi? Well, there is someone. Normally, I'd advise against contacting him. But after considering these extraordinary circumstances, and with trust in your choice of a path to lead me down, I'm compelled to reveal that it's Ariel Rofe. Of course. Do you know one another? <laughs> well, I know him well enough to suspect that he might not want to help me. But I'll look for him. Mercy rebuilds bridges. I think I know where Rafa would tell me to shove that. All right, I think it's time for us to go. This place just makes the blood boil. Shall we? Let's get out of here. To the rescue, the Kabbalist. I'll need the help of a Kabbalist to tame or get rid of Gollum. Rabbi Feldman confirmed my fear is the only Kabbalistic thaumaturge he knows is Ariel Rofa. Alright. Why is it bringing me to both places? Let's go to Port Praga. See why it's pointing me here. It's here, but something's wrong. Uh, 
Have we met? I told you it was him. The son of Śródmieście. A great bout in the dungeon. Top notch. Want to help some brothers in need? That depends on whether you know where Ariel Rofe is. Well then, no. Go to hell. Wait. He's got important business here too. And if we do know, you'll help? What's going on? Something's lit a fire under the copper's asses. It ain't enough that their weapon transport went missing. They mucked up again recently. Mm. Something smashed it to smithereens and now half the damn harbor's gone. They called in patrols and the army and they're guarding it now. But there's this little thing we gotta get from where it's stashed and destroy it for Ariel. So, you gonna help us or what? And that damage at the port, what's it from? Don't know. The socialists blew something up probably. Okay, so yeah, they don't have any idea. No matter what. What matters is it throws a wrench in the works for us. This guy's head is too big, small for his stands. body. <laughs> Helping or not. Very, very tiny head, very, very large shoulders. What are you supposed to get rid of for Ariel? Why do you care? Because I'm the one taking risk. If you don't succeed, then you don't need to know, right? I'll see what I can do. Chevonada. How did you know I was Polish? Because you're asking a stupid question instead of doing what you're told. Wow. What you're looking for here, Pariak? What treasures are they hiding in there that they need all these guards? His Excellency's dirty underwear. What do you care? I'm looking for a friend who's gone missing. I want to see if he's here. If he were here, I wouldn't brag about knowing somebody like that. And if I insist, will you call your buddies over and give me a thrashing? Da. Come here, so cute, dieti. Beauty, Poliaka. We're gonna fight. We are. All right, let's just beat him up. Whatever, right? Take him out. There's no consequences. All right, so we've been uh, we have been getting into a lot more fights lately, which is kind of fun. Um. Yeah, get dunked on, dude. Uh, no. Get dunked on. There we go. Yeah, I'm just gonna punch him. I really should have focused, but it's fine. Or like re reverse focus. All right. What do they have on them? Speeds up cued skill by one round. Oof. I'll just quick attack him. Goody. Goody. Interestingly enough, bullets are not very scary, so not really much of a problem. We need Uber for him. Marana. Probably a good idea. Actually, Lelek. Let's just transfer those and uh, I'm gonna divert you because focus damage seems to get behind uh, some of these traits. Let's do this. Took out three there. You know, I should be able to uh, use, what's it called? Krampus in this fight because I'm going to bring down people's diversion quite a bit. Slow that down. Ukovach him. Goody. 
he's gonna defense up the team, which isn't that wild. Distract you. Heal myself to disable your trait. Let's just do this again. And that'll concuss him. It broke his attention too. So that keeps us out of harm's way for a little while. Goody. All right. Just kill him instantly. And then uh, Krampus, 40 damage. Take him out. Oh, and it's quick too. Thir it only did 30. It was supposed to do 40. Oh, because I killed the guy. God damn it. I see. And we'll just do Devil's Punishment again. He's dead. This will still do good damage. Yeah, that's fine. Ouchie. Ouchie. I'm just gonna punch him. I guess shoot him. <laughs> there we go. Problem solved. So much for discretion. What the hell do you need that spellbook for? Leave him. We'll take what we need and get the hell out of here. Okay. Probably not the best way of going the about it. The but... They have the way with this place. Let's figure out where all the things are and then just get them in a line. Counterfeit bill, a counterfeit American dollar. The idea was sound, the execution not too shabby. However, intuition suggested it best to hide the bill in the apartment and abandon the counterfeiting business for the time being. But it proved harder than expected. Maybe one day. Window with an unattractive view. A dilapidated window overlooking a filthy courtyard. The pain carries the memory of a face. A face looking out the window. Furrowed brow, lips curled in disapproval. Eyes expressing contempt. This dark hovel is overwhelming. Nothing like an apartment above the rooftops with a view of Goshini Dwarf Bazaar. Loose board. Someone kept a cash here. Clever. A skittish thought made its way under the board. What if someone sees him? What if that, which had been painstakingly concealed, got into the wrong hands? Just imagine the mess. Maybe he should move everything home to Mirov? No, precious items belong under the board. Dry Hala. Half eaten, it's been here for a long time. Mm, the heart rejoiced with each bite of the hollow uh, bought, bought at a favorite bakery. The smell of fresh bread, wafting in every day from downstairs through the cracked window, floods the soul with warmth and gives strength to fight the adversities of everyday life. The search for the Kabbalist, Port Praga. Ariel's apartment must be somewhere high above the bakery. He probably lives in the attic of one of the tenement houses in Morav since he can see the Goshenid Var Bazaar from Under his window. Under the sky of Mirov, a thaumaturge has his... Here we go. All right, let's go to Povishla to try and contact him first, which will probably let us know that he's missing because for some reason we can do this quest out of order. I guess this is listed as a sub thing, so we should actually do this first. Let's do that. Aha! Uh -huh. Verticality! Level design! 
We'll take it. Delightful. Mental Mezuza. Fragments of Taurus scrolls are inside. They are meant to protect against evil forces. Mezuza is marked with a very clear thaumaturgic intention that arranges itself into a message. Ye who enter here, fuck off if you know what's good for you. I like Ariel a lot. He's funny. He's a funny character. A cabalist sten. So so. He said not so bad. Why why did the voice actor say so so? Those are different things. <laughs> Old boxing gloves. They have the name Barshchik embroidered on them. I have a feeling I've seen them somewhere before. The gloves are wrapped tightly into the words of grief and sadness at the loss of a friend. Who would have thought that Barshchik would leave such a void behind? Turns out he hold up at Ruzitsky Bazaar. Ruzitsky Market. Nails. Big iron nails used at a construction site. The nails smolder with Ariel's embarrassment. After all, he didn't do anything special. He canceled the debt. Nothing more. This merchant better stop thanking him and let him take those damn nails. Honestly, as we get closer to the end of the game, these like weird subtitle inconsistencies have gotten way more apparent. The Count of Monte Cristo book. A copy of the work of Alexander Dumas read to the point of falling apart. Page after page, time after time, night after night. This book never bores and never disappoints. What intrigue, what a delicious plan of revenge. Bravo, Count. Ariorofa and God don't get along so well. Long prayers, religious meditations, accompany the polishing of a sacred object. This is a thing of the past. Today, the menorah is shunned. The only thing that marks it is resentment, indicating that Ariel is no longer on good terms with God. Is it offer capable of emotion? Decorative powder box, charred with a cracked mirror. Sorrow has settled on the object, constricting the throat into a knot and removing the breath from the lungs. Why did she go where he could not follow? Somewhere along the way, this is why he has the Dybbuk, the un unhappy love. Somewhere along the way, Ariel Rafa came to the conclusion that there was no god, that only the strongest would survive, and that revenge was the best goal in life. However, under the mask of a tough gangster, he still hides a warm and sensitive heart. He's a helpful neighbor, a loyal friend, and a lover despairing after a loss. I see you, Ariel. Rafa is such a cool character. He's so cool. I don't want to miss out on the ability to contact him and get experience, though. Because he is at Rajitsky Bazaar. But again, this is a sub-quest, so we just have to go do it, I guess. I'll just go to Povishla real quick. See what happens. Th this game's shape is so interesting just so very different than what i imagined back when i saw its first trailer and those feelings that i had back when we first started playing it of just being stunned that it's an isometric game it's a point and click detective game is just like still very present with me and no matter the you know jankiness of it the euro jank of it all it's still Quiet just this time. very enjoyable, very interesting game. Bored? Then go ask that uniform what he's doing here, or tell him to skidoo. Are we gonna hey, fight? fancy pants! Fuck off! Hang on, hang on. You lost, officer? Hang on. That's the mama's boy of Shrudmeshche. His neck doesn't match his body. I was wondering when they'd be holding fights again in the dungeon. Your face itching, mama's boy? Weird no, eyes. We've got some kind of scrap to set up. They dubbed me the son of Shrudmeshtia, if I remember correctly. Easy enough to check. Alrighty. Okay, so it was worth coming here because we're going to get experience for doing this. I like how these three people just, like, materialized. Alright, let's mess them up. Uh, Diversion. You're going to get Bukovached.
I'm gonna keep trying to take that down. Because I'm gonna use the trait disabling attack with uh, Marana, or maybe Krampus on this next turn. I just need to wait for that to end, so we'll just do this. Okay, that didn't kill. That's a real bummer. Okay. Oh, this is a Krampus. Ah. Uh... Okay, that's fine. Um... We'll just mess him up, it's fine. Get gored. Sure, punch me, dude. I get my full health back after this turn, so it's fine. It's over. Bada bing, bada boom. Hang on, hang on. That's enough. You, you're the son of a bitch of Shrutmeshe. I'm looking for Ariel Rofe. All right, I don't know. Just <laughs> tell him something. <laughs> Take a look at Ruzitsky Bazaar. He has got this sort of geschäft there. Thanks. Really, that's they literally They're right to call this place the dungeon. They're just gonna tell me? God damn. The morning courier, classified to Victor Shulsky. I kindly request a meeting at the cafe near your home. I have a matter of great importance to discuss with you, sir. Well, TF. There we have it. Okay. We have a new thing. Alright, so before we progress the main quest, I guess we'll we'll do this little thing. Because Fagin wants to meet with us. Hmm, very interesting. Let's head in here real quick just to check. Is there anything remaining in here? Hey, Tom. Uh, let's see. Okay, so... We got to go to the cafe near our house, which is in southern Shrodmicha. It's interesting because none of the quests we've needed to do have required more heart or word than we already have. Or any of our, like, thaumaturgy emotions. So I'm just sitting on eight skill points because I don't need to upgrade my guys at all. Another aspect of, like, late game lacking balance is just, like... Eh, we don't really need to engage with any of this uh, secondary features. The game is easy enough as it is, even though we're on the hard mode, I think. I don't know if I'm on super hard mode or just like regular hard mode, but... Lechite Manifesto, people of... or maybe Letzit Manifesto, I don't know. People of independent Poland, enough humiliation, years of suffering under the iron boot of partitionist violence. The dawn of a new world is coming, in which the power of our nation is once again awakening to life. Strengthened by the terror, it has survived stronger than ever. The heart of each pole still pumps the blood of the ancient Lechite warriors. Lechite, Lechite, I have no idea. The tribe of brave Slavs who ruled uh, these lands since time immemorial. Our freedom was snatched from us by deceit, so we will not shy away from any measure to regain it. Therefore, we postulate as a chosen group of representatives of the sacred Lakite nation, blessed by God. We will fight for Poland's independence against a despicable invader with all means at our disposal. We have tolerated a foreign race on our sacred lands for too long. Therefore, we will try to cleanse the republic from the swarm of blah, 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 blah. A billion different people. So they're just like ethno-nationalists. That's boring. 
We want to demolish museums, libraries, and universities. We will fight moralism, feminism, and end all opportunism. We will build culture anew, enough of misrepresentation in history being written with the pen of vicious vipers. So help us God Almighty and all the saints. You realize that the religion that you're following in this is also was also spread to you and was not the native religion of your land, my friend. Just putting that out there. Fagin? W.S., it's good that you're here. Did you get my message? Indeed. I need your help. Did someone get upset that you were following him, sniffing after a scandal? Got him. No, I've gotten used to that already. This is something bigger. What is it? Have you heard what happened at Vienna Station? No. There was an attack, bloody and brazen, several dead, all of them civilians, it seems. A new group of fanatics have taken credit for the assassination. They call themselves Lechites. I was the right. The Russians have put Zukov himself on the case. I want to write about it, the truth, but I need help. What did I do to earn such trust? I liked how you handled the case of the Krajewskis and Pietya Alexandrovich. Krajewski hasn't said a thing since then. Impressive, but also a bit scary. There is no one in Warsaw more suitable for what I am about to propose to you. You flatter me. Enough to get you interested in this case? I've never written an article. How can I help? I'll handle the writing. You focus on finding these Lachites. I want to eliminate the possibility of this being a Russian provocation. I'll interview them. What do you make of this? Zukov. Is he that famous investigator? They say he's amazing and very effective. If the Ruskies have got him on this case, it must be the top priority. Anything else? I wouldn't be so sure the censors would allow you to print something like this. I don't write exclusively for state-run newspapers. Have you ever heard anything about Kimichits? I haven't. I only know the character from the book by Shinkevich. It's nothing special. This is my pseudonym for a certain underground publication. I'll admit that I am rather well known in patriotic circles as Kimichits. Congratulations. Keep asking. Okay. <laughs> Who died in this attack? That's what's suspicious. Nobody knows. The list of victims has been classified, but I know that they're most likely civilians, random people, Poles. The Lachites fancy themselves patriots, and look what we have here. Anything else? Who are those Lachites? Nobody knows. They've shown up in Warsaw only recently. This is the first attack they've taken credit for. That's why I want to reach out and talk to them. That's enough for me to start with. So you agree? Yes. Maybe I'll reach out to Uncle. Good idea, because you need a pass to access the attack site. They won't just let anyone in. No offense. Do you ever see Vonda? Perhaps I should speak to her. Wonderful. Fine. And when you happen to stumble across a Lahite, don't forget to call me. It's a shrewd mischia number, 3490. I'm also leaving you their manifesto. I just want to talk to them and write an honest article about them, in Polish. All right, so we got some information, I suppose. That's interesting. Do we want to talk to Voronin or Wanda first is my my question. Uh, we'll have to go to Southern Shrodmicha first, I suppose, because uh, Ariel is in Rojitsky, so two birds with one stone once we go there. I think that makes sense.